My name is Wayne Mitchell, and I've discovered that racism is a system of keeping people in subjugation. It began early 14, 1500s, where people in Europe, nine nations, found out that they can get free land and free labor and go to America and become rich, working Black people to death. And they didn't have to pay them. They didn't have to take care of them, really. You know, if you... If they die, get another one, breed them, whatever you need to do to keep you a, a wealthy um, opportunity. And so in 1865, when it was all divided up and those nations basically took their pieces of the pie, the system they put in place to keep Black people subjugated was racism. And I'm telling you, my story is that, you know, for the last 36 years, I've been on a journey of trying to cross this divide because I'm making forays into, you know, white communities and I may be the only guy there, you know what I mean? So it's, it's been an interesting receptivity. And I noticed that it gets a little tight and sketchy. You know, I'm, I'm a believer in Jesus and what that did for me 36 years ago, actually 45, almost 45 years ago, is it changed my perspective on who people are. And right now what I'm watching is just blowing me away. It's just really disheartening because I see people that I love, people that I know I've learned to love over the years. And I'm talking about people from every persuasion and every racial background, and I'm finding them divided on this issue of how to actually work this out. I'm a kingdom man and I know the solution as far as I'm concerned is that we all look at kingdom principles, but we are so focused on sociology and it frustrates me so badly. In 1974, I was driving across country from Baltimore to Illinois to Macomb, Illinois. I was a graduate student at Western Illinois University and I'd gone out to Maryland to pick up my fiance and, uh, and my daughter that I was adopting and we were driving. And I remember um, I got pulled over by a police officer. And he looked and he saw the baby in the car. He saw me and my fiance. And he told me I had to, to uh, go with him. And so I had to follow him to this little town. And they put me in a jail cell because the magistrate, the judge was supposed to not be there until six o'clock or seven o'clock in the morning. And I was sitting in that jail cell, looking out through the bars at my fiance and my baby. And it must have been like 90 hours in that night, waiting for that judge to come. And it didn't have to happen from what I heard from the judge the next day. He was asking me, well, how long have you been here? And I told him I've been here all night. And he looked at the officers in the courtroom with disgust. And he said, let this man out here. And, and we got in the car and left. Turns out that it was a traffic violation. I was going a little fast. And he could have just written me a ticket and let me pay for it. But I don't know, I, the anger I had was just the, the, the humiliation of having to look at my, my lady and my baby. And I never thought I'd let them see me through any bars. But that happened. The prophet Micah in chapter six Verse eight, he says, he has told you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness or mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Humble, humble is a word that means to me, it is not about me. And so I, I, I don't make it about me, not anymore. I'm learning to be content with the things as they are in my life and just thank God for the things that I, I see that are the real gifts to me, my family, my relationships. And I'm really working hard to develop some relationships and I'm trying to do justice and love the kindness and love the mercy 
and, and stay humble in relationships with people because that's, that's really where I'm finding the greatest joy in my life.